All right, let's go. This is 2016, May, June, unit two. Okay, for each of the following scenarios, identify which data structure will be most appropriate when writing software. For a call center to ensure that calls are answered first in, first out, this would be a, a queue because queues are first in first out. Um, to allow the undo button to operate correctly in a word processing application, for example, Microsoft Word, a undo will be the last change that you made will have to come back out, so that'll be a stack. To store an unknown number of data items and subsequently search this data structure for different keys, that will be a linked list. No problems there. That's pretty straightforward, easy three marks. Um, in the space below, write the code to implement the following function. The function accepts a string S, stores the string in a new node, and inserts this node at the front of an existing linked list. Assume that top points to the first node of the existing list. Um, all right. So I think you remember when I was doing it, so I was telling y'all that linkless code um, is not testable in the exam but this year they brought it and all the examiners and all the teachers were unhappy but the code exists and we i'll just go through it in a three four it's a three mark question so it's not really supposed to break the bank but um the examiner's report for this one said that yeah very few candidates scored full marks as they always say thanks means a lot uh, so let's go with the link code. All right, so you have to, they give you the name of the thing, which is public void insert the front string S. And what was even worse that this here is Java. That's not even like, well, no, it's C++ instead of C, but that's okay. Did it tell us the node is created already? It also a string in a new node and inserts the node at the front of an existing list. So we had to create the new node. So we go into create structs um struct node um new node and when we create the new node what we want to do is no this wouldn't be named new node sorry we name new value let me just name it new yeah. right so we just call it new and the new has two parts that it has a string and then a pointer so we want to now take the we are seeing that create already so we put in new dot dash name or something so is equal to s accepts the string s to the string in the new node and inserts this node at the front of the existing link list i see that top point to the first node of the existing list so then we're going to say new dash pointer is equal to that was the one again that's it you assign top to new pointer um top point to the first node what do you want us to insert it insert to the front okay yeah my bad yeah mix it up so we basically be taken top, top which is a point already and let's say top call to new pointer no top will be new yeah. top will be an um an empty node so we could say top dot pointer is equal to new top pointer is equal to new yeah and maybe maybe if you want to make sure that everything is is on that uh, not a problem you could say new pointer is equal to null just to make sure it points into the right all right there's only three marks they're looking for so I suspect that they're looking for you to create the new node, which is one mark here. Then they're looking for you to assign it, and then they're looking for you to point it. That would be most likely straightforward. We can just use going to party to the to place the string value in a link to this node and feel to execute the point and manipulation required to place it on the Yeah, right, good. Yeah, so the three marks would follow that. Create the new node, then put the variable inside of it, and then point it to the, well, sort it out so that it end up in front, which is top pointer pointer. But I just put new pointer. Um, is equal to null just for good measure because that will make sure that it, the the value is well, there's only one value and pointing to null. All right, Q is an empty Q of size five. In the space provided below, draw diagrams to show the contents of the Q after each of the following lines are executed. Lines three, four, and five show all elements in the Q for each illustration. So we want to draw this Q. Um, five spaces. Of, um, all right, so we want to and Q A. It will go here. Next one. Oh, I'm not gonna draw that whole thing. I'm not gonna draw for that. And then next one should be after we get the A. That's not. I'm gonna duplicate it. How many times I will? Five times. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Yeah, I didn't screen. Yes, that didn't work out too well. My shortcut failed me. Let's try it one more time. I'll move them one at a time. One, right. Okay, good. So we NQA, then we add NQB, then we NQC, and then we have the DQ. So we'll have the B and the C, but the A will be gone. And then we have the NQA again. So we'll have the B and the C, and then we have the A. NQ, 
A and Q, B and Q, C. All right, that's the first three. Then we have to DQ, or we have which will take out the A and then the B, right here. Yeah. We don't need to see what the, we do not we don't need to show that the variable C ended up having an A inside of it. All they ask you to do is show the elements of the Q. So just show whatever, whatever happened to the Q in that time. And we execute it on our stack. Yeah, three options that can be executed on our stack. That's push, pop, and, I don't know, it's full. Push adds a value to the top of the stack. I don't know how much description in ones is six marks, so. We had to get a two mark, hmm. but by putting the word push, that's clearly one mark because you know that is a push adds a value to the top of the stack. Much more description. I don't know. By inserting, by carrying up top by one, by carrying up top by one, and inserting it, inserting the value at the top. The value at the top. Right, pop removes a value from the stack by taking out the number not a value and carries the top down by one and there is also peak and then this is full and is empty so what we do is full is full checks to see if the value of top is equal to the max size of the stack cool um you could also do is 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 empty right so to do the is empty i'll just just for putting it sake so we put all of them is empty check to see if the value of top is equal to minus one uh that would be yeah that would be the four things i could use i don't know if they will accept peak i can't say Right, in the space of variable, we'll write the C code which will reverse the order of a set of items in a queue. For example, if initially the queue contains the elements x1, x2, x3 to the end with x1 at the front of the queue, then your code should reverse this order. Did they say that we could use our stack? The only way to reverse our queue is to, well, no, there are other ways. But the easiest way is to send all the items to our stack and then put them back in. It had no way you could do it with one queue alone. Like, if it does have one queue, it's really impossible to reverse the values inside our one queue without storing it in some other data data structure so normally when they ask this question they tell you use a stack you have to you have a stack at your uh, available and you want it so i would assume based on my based on like um past experiences that you you're going on push everything to you're going to dequeue everything into our stack and then pop it back into to the queue so we'll do it that way so the first thing that we want to do is um and then they, they even tell you if you could use is full and is empty and those sort of things like they, like they tell you if you have to use is full and is empty if that's um acceptable or whatnot so 10 marks 10 marks the little the gray areas in this question will be difficult all right so um all right we will do it manually for everything we'll do everything manually or should we write function we just say write code so anything that you write supposed to work yeah we'll do it manually and do and and modify all the tops and all them thing and the front and your rear and okay so we write in the while um, q dot front is um less than or equal to q dot rear um so that's our first check we're checking to make sure the front and the rear don't cross each other um yeah uh, q dot front is not equal to q dot rear we want to dq the value we had to assume that they have dq available to us right we don't have to write the whole dq for ourselves but we will we would you know you had to push it you had to call the push function because to write over a whole new push just for that now you had to push into the stack the value of um q dot front value at q location front okay right, let's say while front is less than rare we're going to push into the value q location front into the stack and that'll push everything then we had to reset the value so front is equal to minus one and rare is equal to minus one and once we reset the values now we're going to do our next while loop to say while um while rare is less than max size minus one while the rare is less than max size minus one we will pop from the 
from the stack um wherever you pop from the stack you're putting it into q location rear is equal to what you pop from the stack for s for stack right so you're putting out the rear where you pop on the stack and then you're saying rear plus plus i'll carry up the rear by one each time and as long as it do, do reach the max size it should be okay and then we will stop here yeah. Now for 10 marks, I I find it hard to believe that you'll want you to write out the, all the code for a push. If you have to write out all the code for a push, you basically going to have to say, if you're gonna write out all the code for a push, you're going to say top plus plus, and then you're going to say stack location top is equal to Q location front. And for the pop, if you're gonna write out the code for the pop, you're gonna create a variable or like x or something and they're gonna say x is equal to no x is equal to s location top and then you're gonna say top minus minus and then you say q location rear will be equal to x um yeah so if they if they wanted all the all the code then that's what you would do but if you're just using the ADT operations for this for the stack because they didn't tell you what to do they just say write c code normally they will tell you clearly you cannot use you you can only use ADT operations or you have to do this or you have to do that but they didn't say that here so um i'll say that so let me see if i could get 10 marks from just this part alone and if i can't get the 10 marks from that part alone then we most likely would have had to write out all the code so knowing that you have to use our while loop is one the condition for the while loop for the q that's definitely necessary to see that front is less than equal Array because once front re re um, reach the array, that means the queue empty. Push is the function there, yeah, and you're pushing the value from the front of the queue because you have to prove that you're going from front of the queue. Resetting the queue to empty is necessary. After you reset it to empty, you need to know how to check to see when our queue is now full. And when we check to see if the queue is now full, we put in, in that location rear whatever we pop from the stack and we carry up the rear by one so that it will keep going how much did i get there one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah i feel this is the way i feel this one is the way because if you had to do all of this all of this over here that would have carry up the marks to about 15 marks so you usually give you like a mark for being correct or complete or something like that okay so that's the answer any questions here okay oh look at this say a few candidates scored high marks on this part of the question and those with better scores use an auxiliary structure or a swap to achieve this objective okay so you could use our auxiliary structure and if we're using our auxiliary structure um that means we're using we're using the stack okay, cool. so then yeah so then it's safe to use push and pop because you're just using the stack as if it's there all right next a certain single link list is loaded with five integers the head of the list is accessed via top explain how the first node can be deleted okay step one is step one is point the current top to the second node to point the first node to nothing or null and then three is deallocate memory for the first node all right so basically when you're deleting a node well if you're deleting a first node you just go down and tell the top act like the first one not there so press point to the second one and then de deallocate the space and usually that's that's all happen for the um how the last node will be deleted the last node will be deleted by pointing point c second to last node to null two points the last node to nothing and then three deallocate the space for the last node mm, uh, yeah or no i think i know what they want because with three marks it's not making sense okay there's another way to do it uh, i think that it, that's what they're looking for so step one is store the pointer location for the first node after you store the pointer location for the first node then you point the top to that location so the pointer location from the first node from right so you're taking whatever the first node was pointing to which is the second value yeah. from the first node so you're taking that and then you point that to the next location right so you do the same thing but for the last one you're not storing you see you're storing the pointer location of the actually this one you don't store the pointer location because you're taking out the last node last node coming out the pointer location you know is null so this one is correct yeah, yeah this one is correct the first one is the one that had a technicality so point the second to last node to null and write it over the way they want it then store the last node pointer location and then point the second to last node to that stored location which is actually null but i have no idea if i have no idea if they will accept 
if you just say put the null in because if you point it straight to null it should work but i don't know all right explain how any node between the first and last can be deleted all right this one is the technical one basically the diagram for this is you have let me say you have three nodes and they all point into each other like like so what you want to do is you want to pull this one out so in order to pull this one out you have to store wherever this pointer is here and then then get this one to point to that pointer and then delete that one because then it will be an effect point into that so, so the location of the no store the location of the pointer in the node to be deleted to would be point the previous node to that location three would be the allocate memory from the node to be deleted what else we want why is it for max why is it for max it is for max because that's not an add if it was an add then you would have had more things to do but it's a delete delete the node pointer <laughs> um delete the node pointer all right so that's the only thing i could see to fill up so yeah all right so let's see if i change this to delete the value of what is inside the node so delete the value that is in the node to be deleted yeah that's the only stretch that I could get to get the formats because add, adding in a new node is a format question because you have to create a new node so you have to pass step to create a new node but to delete a node is is almost the same thing as the other the add into the front or add into the rear that's point 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 okay write C code to declare an array number that can store 10 integers okay in the R R and no the name of the array is number right. int number 10 Right. right code to fill the number with integers entered by the user p in c for c is equal to sorry c is equal to zero c less than 10 c plus plus kind of, um, percent d um comma and number c pretty much the user would enter the values and it would just run for 10 times right here that's fine four marks for that way for you sometimes i was wonder why it is asking these simple questions but okay in this piece provided um right sql to accept an integer key from the user and search for the number to see if the key is present using a linear search linear search is easy but when you have to do a linear search that's not a function you have to do some extra stuff to make sure that your friendly key not found so if it's a function you could just return minus one for not found now but if it's a if it's c code you had to write the code and make sense so so we're searching for the um printf enter key to be found and then after we put enter key to be found we will scan it um, percent d and key just declare key and key put to zero right, so we put that and we get a key now we are create a for loop and c is equal to zero also so for c is equal to zero c less than 10 c plus plus we want to say if e equal to double equal number location c printer found at percent d location c printer now we see um and then well that for loop will end there and then we want to say if say found is equal to one yeah so that means if you find it is that found the one and say if found is not equal to one then your printer um, p not found all right so basically the second if here is to just print out if it's not found and the only way it will be not found is if this never gets set to one so we had to create a variable for found up here found is equal to zero all right so found will stay at zero all the time unless it is found and if it is found and reprint it. Yeah, that's all.